Hey there, I'm SourceMake and in this video we are going to go over blockchain, Ethereum, and Bitcoin by answering 10 really short, really simple questions about them. So I've got my website here and I've got 10 questions, they're really short and the answers are really like so concise. And at the end of these 10 questions, you're going to understand what blockchain is, what Bitcoin is, what smart contracts are, all that good stuff that may seem complicated. We're going to explain it in a really simple way so that even five-year-olds could understand it. Anyone new to this, anyone who wants to know what it is, they're going to learn about it in this video. So let's go ahead and get started with the first question. So number one, what is a blockchain? A blockchain is just a chain of blocks. It's literally a line of these blocks. So you can imagine it as some square and there's a line of them. That's a blockchain. So the next question is, what's a block? So a block has certain data inside of it that we care about capturing. And there are four things that are inside of a block for a blockchain. One is a reference to the previous block in the chain. So, so this block here has a reference to this block who's in front of him. You got to know who's in front of you. There is also the proof of work, which we'll explain next. There's a timestamp for the block when the block is created. And there is a Merkle tree root for all of the transactions that are included in the block. This is a really fancy way of saying there's like a nice way of storing the actual data inside of the block. So whatever the block stores, maybe it's the number of sheep on a farm. Maybe it's the number of like, you know, US dollars that a bank has. Whatever the information is, the data itself is, it's going to be stored in a Merkle tree root. And it's just data. So next, what is that proof of work that we talked about? Now, that is a specific type of a consensus algorithm. And proof of work specifically is used in Bitcoin mining. So basically what it means, it's, it's solving a puzzle that's easy to check, but hard to solve itself. So for example, it's really easy to check if a key works on a lock, right? If you have a key, you put it inside of the lock, it either opens the lock or it doesn't, right? Yes or no. It's really super simple to try that. But it's hard to actually create a key that works on a lock. So if you have a lock, you don't know how to open it at first with a lock picking kit or something. Like if you want to try to make a key that works on the lock, it takes a lot of resources. So, but it's easy to check if the key works on the lock, right? That's basically what proof of work is. And that's used in Bitcoin mining. It's basically the consensus algorithm. Other consensus algorithms are proof of stake, proof of elapsed time, proof of authority, and you know, those are just some popular ones that maybe you should know, you know, just that you've heard of them. So what is a consensus algorithm? Consensus just means that everyone on the network agrees that the data in the ledger is correct. So to understand this, let's imagine that we're in school and we have a group project. Maybe we're working on some sort of paper for history class. And maybe there's six people in our group and we've, we've got this Google Doc, right? And we're, we've got to write our paper for the Google Doc. And um, let's say I write my part, someone else writes their part, and we have this title page with everyone's names on it. And um, we have our names in a certain order. Maybe Mary's first, source make a second. Joe is third, etc. And we all print our copy of the paper. And the next day in school, when we look at it, I say, oh, well, how come Jill put her name on top on her paper, but everyone else has her as the fifth person on the list? You know, we all recognize that Jill's data is different from ours, from everyone else's. And, you know, that's not consensus. Consensus is making sure that everyone agrees on the data. But Jill tried to change the data and everyone else knows that's false, Jill. Come on, get out of here with that. So um, a consensus algorithm is basically the computer way of checking on a blockchain that data is actually correct, that nothing got changed, that um, everything on the blockchain is on the, you know, on the up and up. And that works because of a distributed ledger. Basically, everyone has their own copy of the Google Doc. And because of that, no one can like change something. Um, so, so that answers question five, what is the distributed ledger? Basically, think of it like this. Imagine everyone has their own version of the Google Doc. And if I change something on the Google Doc, then everyone else's updates if it's OK. Um, if I don't change anything, then, you know, everyone's Google Docs is the same. And to compare this to something that's not a distributed ledger, like typical server database technology, maybe I have, in, a, in another group project, I have the Microsoft Word document for our paper on my computer, but no one else has a document uh, on their computer. So the whole group is relying on my Microsoft Word document that only exists on my computer. It only exists on mine. If they want it, they have to ask me for, for the access and they have to make sure that I'm not going to do anything bad with the data. 
that is why blockchain is good because you know you share the data with everyone and since there's consensus everyone knows that the data is like technically correct so a distributed ledger is basically just a copy of the blockchain itself remember the blockchain is these blocks of data that's in a line and a distributed ledger is just a copy of that blockchain that exists on everyone's computers. Because it exists on everyone's computers, no one else can say, hey, uh, I'm going to change this one specific block to make it so that I'm a millionaire. You, you can't do that with blockchain. That's by, um, so, so that's actually a concept called decentralization. So what does decentralized mean? Decentralized means that the blockchain is stored on everyone's computers and not just one so that, um, you know, it's not on one central location. The document isn't just on my computer. It's on everyone's. So that's decentralization if anyone asks you. So let's get into the fancy cryptocurrency questions next. So what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is just a cryptocurrency that uses blockchain as their backend. Miners mine blocks to generate coins, which are Bitcoins. Next, what is a cryptocurrency then you might ask? Cryptocurrency is just an online virtual currency and um, most famously, is it's backed by blockchain. So the reason that it has value, that Bitcoin has value, is because people decide that there's value in it. Now, um, we can compare this to like jewelry. So let's say that um, we, we have an emerald. An emerald itself is like this green gem that looks really nice. But can you eat it? Can, can you do anything with it? Not really. The only reason that it has value is because some rich person says, hey, you know what? I think my ears would look fancy if I had an earring that were made from emeralds. So they decide to pay $5,000 for an emerald. And, you know, that, that's why it has value because it looks nice. And Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are basically the same way. Now, emeralds do cost money to make, right? You have to mine it from a cave or whatever. You have to refine it so that it's like a nice circle. You have to actually put it together to put it in an earring so that it can go on someone's ears. That all does cost money, so there is some worth there, but mostly the value is because someone actually likes the color of the gem because it looks nice. Bitcoin is sort of the same way. It does cost money to mine. It does take computational resources but mainly it has value because people decide that they like it and, and that the value is there and of course this is opposed to like a actual currency like united states dollar where there's a government backing it so that's what a cryptocurrency is you know there's value because people like it so what about ethereum Ethereum is another famous system that uses blockchain and Bitcoin focuses on mining for the sake of having money, for the sake of having coins. Ethereum likes to deploy apps and have what's called smart contracts that are actually backed with the blockchain technology. So blockchains are blocks of data, right? But you don't have to just use it for Bitcoin. You could use it for these things called smart contracts. And that's what Ethereum is. So next, and, and Ether is the cryptocurrency that is awarded for mining the block. So, you know, let's say um, there's something, a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain network, and it takes um, com computational power to actually do the work for that smart contract, which we'll explain in a second. Um, the, the people need to get money to get paid for that actual computational work. And that's called Ether. That's what they get paid. And that's why that particular cryptocurrency has value. Not because it's like Bitcoin where people decide it has value. It's because it actually, you know, people do work with their computers to actually finish those calculations. It takes work to do that. So it comes to our final question, which is sort of important. What are smart contracts? Smart contracts are basically a set of rules and instructions that exist as software that automatically get filled as conditions get met. So as an example, maybe I have a will um, and it could be super complicated. If I die at age 90, then give everything to my wife. If I have three grandkids, then give the first grandkid 50% of my money, give the other two 25% if that, if that happens. And, you know, you could get really specific. So it's, it's just a set of rules. You know, it's basically like a regular program. And the reason that smart contracts are important on the blockchain 
is because no one can tamper with the data on the blockchain. That's the whole reason smart contracts are good. Not the whole reason, but that, that's one of the main reasons. Because once you decide on that will and you push it onto the blockchain or you make a smart contract and you put it on the blockchain, no one can change their mind. No one can edit the data. No one can you know say anything about it. It's on the blockchain. It's going to get fulfilled. No one can edit it or, or mess with it. So that's why smart contracts are really good and it's really popular. So. I hope that answers a lot of the basic questions. We went over what blockchain is. We explained Bitcoin, Ethereum, mining, everything with really simple questions. If you like this content, go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the link, um, the button below this video. And there'll be a link to this webpage too if you want to read this yourself. I'll have more content with blockchain, Bitcoin, Ethereum, mostly programming content, maybe explaining it. So do try to stay tuned. I'm Soyce Make. Thanks for watching.